It's your boy Richie Booz and all of my man Lon Guapo, and we on Juice Talk TV because you know I got the juice. Juice Talk TV, what the fuck it do? It's your main man, Cool Tay, man. Very special guest in the building, man. The one and only. Richie Booze, man, how you feeling, my guy? Man, chilling, chilling, chilling. Man, blessed to have you in the building, man. I see you brought a special guest with you, man. Who you bring with you with you uh, today? Lon Guapo. Lon you know. Guapo. How you doing, Lon Guapo? Uh, I'm doing pretty good, dude. That's good to meet y'all, man. How y'all feeling? It's nice as hell today, man. Hey, man, it's hot. You know what, though? You, be, you know, <laughs> in the city of Milwaukee, you be having a cold, cold day, so... You know, when that weather break, everybody get out there, shit. It feel like something, you know what I'm saying? But... How y'all feeling today? How y'all feeling today? Copacetic. Copacetic. <laughs> yeah, just out here just chilling, huh? All right, well, you know, let's go and get, get right into it, man. Um, for the people who haven't seen you on this platform in particular, man, Richie, because I know you've been doing your thing for a little minute now, you know, EP just dropped, you know what I'm saying? Enigma. We go get into all that. But for the fans and for the people who haven't seen you on this platform in particular, you know, just let them know who Richie Booz is. Uh, you know, I'm Richie Booz. I'm only 25 years old. You know, I'm an MC, born and raised in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You know, I think I kind of represent the modern era of hip hop, but mm. I represent it in kind of a new way. You know, oh, yeah. I always say I got the game from the old school, but I got the style of the new school. So I learned from kind of all the hip hop's legends, but you know, I still understand the sounds and the frequencies that's commonplace in you know, today's era. So I kind of mix that all in together to bring kind of a new sound. And I think what I'm starting to bring to the game is gonna really try to really change things up a bit. It's not even gonna try. You are, both of y'all. You know what I'm saying? You and Guapo. The way y'all move, the way y'all bounce off, off each other, the way y'all elevating with this music, the substance, which we are gonna get into, definitely gonna change the game. Um, so, you know, let's move on, man. Uh, what side of town are you from, man, in the city, man? Oh, uh, so I'm from the northwest side of town. Now, okay. if you ask me, I consider the northwest side the north side, but if you ask probably a lot of people, they're going to call it the west. Exactly. So I just had that same But dispute. some people going to call it the west, so technically I'm from the west, west but like... West. The north when side. I, when I, I, I consider that the north side. That's so crazy. if you ask me on the street, I'm going to just say the north. So. I say the same thing. <laughs> Don't feel bad. I say the same thing. <laughs> And they'd be like, it's really the west side, but I'm, I'm like, no, I'm, it's I'm the, really north, saying the north side. I only know north side, east side, south, south side. side. Man, that's how it was when I was growing up. Exactly, but, though. I'm hey, glad, I'm glad I ain't the only one. I'm glad I ain't the only one, though. So how was it growing up for you on the on the north side, man? Oh, it was it was pretty good. You know, I can't say that it was really bad. You know, I had both parents that was working, so you know, okay. I kind of had everything I really needed in life. But you know, I always say that even when you kind of grew up like in a good or middle class upbringing in Milwaukee, you still like experience the other parts of it and you like right. you're still going to school and like like i said i had i had it good but some of my friends might have had it worse so mm. like I, even though i had it you know i pretty i had a good upbringing you know not it wasn't too rough i still you know can understand the other parts so that's why even when you hear it in my music it's like it got a mix of like you know different experiences that's, because that's true that's sometimes true. the things i be saying might be my personal experiences but i might be rapping bro experience or i might be telling his story so. which would which does uh a true mc do mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying it's not really just necessarily about them it's about life story yeah things that evolved around them you know um speaking of are you the only sibling or no i'm the, i'm the youngest so i oh, got two older sisters okay yeah. mm -hmm. i know they love your music i know they, they yeah you with. know they was uh, they was really they was the ones who kind of really groomed my style like For when real? i first started rapping they were really the ones pushing me to fix the flows and say this like those were kind of my like one of some of my first tours if you will so, so are they were they musicians too no they wasn't musicians but they worked with like they, artists in the city like you got an ear yeah so they uh like genesis Rangy, like my older sister ob she she worked a lot with his music like shout she out part to genesis Rangy. uh house of Rangy. she was a part of the label not mm. like as an artist but like you know management and you know starting it so uh, so they they weren't artists, but they kind of they had an ear for music and they worked with artists in the city, like especially on the business side. So mm. when it came to me and I started rapping, they was really grooming me for real. That's what's up, man. So you say you're 25, man. Um, what about the schools, man? So you graduated what? Like yeah, so I graduated Marquette University in 2020, okay. but I graduated from Rufus King High School there in 2016. Go. Okay, so yeah. in, in school, 
I'm, I'm assuming you was doing music as well yeah. at the same time. See, I didn't take it seriously until after I got out of high school, but okay. Everybody knew I was a, always a rapper. Like I was always the one rapping for class projects. I was always rapping at the lunch table. Like everybody knew I had bars, but like back then I didn't know how to get to the studio. Like I didn't know how to find beats. Mm. I didn't even have really the money for it back then. So really when I was kind of just in school, I was I ain't gonna lie, I was taking it seriously in the sense I was taking the art of it seriously. Exactly. But I didn't know what it meant to be really a full artist till I graduated high school. But in, in in high school, everybody knew I was like a rapper. Every time it was an English class project, I came. <laughs> Whatever it was, I was coming up with a verse, rapping it on Friday for that class. So, mm. were you getting like to poetry and stuff like that? Yeah, uh huh. Like um, seventh grade, like I kind of started, like I wrote little poems and stuff. Cause seventh grade, that was when I started rapping. I was so, just gonna ask you that. So, when did you actually start? Two thousand ten, like seventh grade. Okay. Yeah, so, okay, that's what's mm-hmm. up, man. So, what actually made you say, you know what? Uh, I can actually do this, you know. I'm good at this. I got the juice. Let me let me pursue this. And yeah. Make this a, a, a profession. The 2010 BET ciphers. I always point to, wow. pinpoint to that exact moment because it's like I remember watching those ciphers on BET, and I remember seeing like the way they was just manipulating all the words. So I said to myself, I said, well, I could do exactly what they're doing. Hmm. Now, don't get me wrong. I wasn't as nice as like they was when I was okay. doing it back then. Okay. But, the way they was like coming up with the punchlines and the metaphors and the wordplays, I was like, bro, this kind of like it's cold. You know, they really got a, a knack for really putting these words together. So I, I said down. to myself, I'm like, I'm gonna try it out. And then, you know, it just became, you know, a love for kind of the craft. But then mm. at, the, at the same time, when I was younger, I was kind of I was more of a quiet, more reserved kind of kid. So I think music at that point, even though I didn't realize it back then, it was kind of like an outlet for me. So when I was writing, it was kind of therapeutic in a sense. I'm glad you said that. Speaking of uh, being younger and growing up, uh, trying to become a musician, who or, or what were some of your type of uh, idols or inspirations back then? Like, uh-huh. what kind of music you still listen to, or yeah. you still listen to? I okay, so let's start young. Let's yeah, start when I was real, real young, like even before I started rapping, like this was before I was even kind of old enough to really listen to music. I probably listened to like everything that was. Out like you know, Soldier Boy, especially like when I was a little kid, like Soldier Boy was kind of like the youngest rapper, mm-hmm. but like so he, and he had on like the hoodies and the bathing apes. So like I remember as a kid, I used to be like, bro, he got all these hoodies. Like I want to dress like him. Then you know, I was always like a real Ti fan when I was okay. younger. But then okay. I think when I started getting older and I really started to you know craft my own style, kind of and you know when I started rapping in 2010, that was kind of the beginning like the mixtape and the blog era. So like exactly, I started listening to um. Uh, like J. Cole, Wale, especially um, Kendrick Lamar, mm. you know. Then especially I started, around that time. Yeah. Especially around that time. I started listening to like a lot of older artists too, like Nas, especially uh, Tupac, Jay-Z, you know, Common. Mm-hmm. Like these are, these are all kind of dudes that really had like a lot of influence on my stuff. And so. I hear it. I mm-hmm. hear it, man. Um, dang, I forgot. I, I wanted, Was you like a fan of the... Uh, like Good Friday era, yeah, had yeah. That little... like Christmas in Harlem. I still play oh, that. every man. every December twenty fifth. I always be playing. Oh it. <laughs> man, like they was going crazy with that yeah. stuff. Man, that, that was some nice. Because you know, Limewire was crazy back then, and like so, you download man, everything. That was like a free for all. <laughs> oh, gee, they don't know nothing about like, kids these days. The people these days probably don't know nothing about Limewire. No, uh, it was that was like kind of the precursor to like the streaming era, exactly. basically. Oh man, Bear Share. Uh, I might have heard of it. For real? I might have heard of it, but because Limeyer was always there, so I was yeah. like, yeah. I didn't really have another one. Once you had Limeyer, you was good. Yeah. <laughs> Google Bear Share, now you're going to be like, wow. Um, okay. So I want to uh, ask you this, man, because you are a very, very, very nice artist, man. Very talented, very smart, very articulate, very educated, man. Um, I want to know what makes you stand out from any other artist in the city? What do you feel that makes you have, you know, the juice in your own way? What makes you stand out? What makes booze stand out? Uh, I'm gonna just kinda, I'm gonna be straight up and be frank with it. Uh, a lot of rappers in the city, they don't really wanna be lyricists no more. Mm. And when I say that, I'm not even necessarily talking about the slap rappers. And the reason I say I'm not talking about the slap rappers is I understand the music they make. I know the crowd they wanna be. They not going in there to spit bars. They going in there to, to, you know, make songs for the streets that's going to bump in the whip. I respect that music. I listen to that music. I enjoy it. They're not the people I'm talking about. But I just think even when I notice, like, for the people who ain't the slap rappers, it's like 
it's also like an alternative lane and they kind of make music mm. and he noticed because we'd be at the showcases and it's like we'd be like and they music is like it's for a different crowd and it's like even the ones who ain't slap rappers it's like they music is more about like the vibes and like the the musicality about it and i'm not saying musicality not important but i think what bring my music so important is that like you know you always gonna get lyrics from me even when i'm oh, turning up you yeah. always gonna get lyrics from me and i think and sometimes like even in the city people look at me and they be like Oh, you so old school, and it's like, bro, why y'all scared to rap? Like, we rappers, ain't we? Like, exactly. I, so I think, and I think also too, like the subject matter I bring is like, I, you know, I always, you know, I don't want to characterize myself as a conscious rapper because I feel like that term gets so cliche and overused. Mm -hmm. But like, you know, my music is always gonna be authentic, and there I you think go. you always gonna leave with something from it, even when I'm flexing. It's gonna be a smart person flexing. You <laughs> gonna like, you gonna hear it and be like. Oh, it's fun, but like it's always. I'm always gonna leave somebody with something. I enjoy. So I always it, think with my music is just, you know, it's just it's authenticity, but it's you no, know, it's also lyrics. You know, I really cherish the art form and you know the craftsmanship of hip hop, and you know, I'm I put words together. That's that's the best way to put it. I put words together. You man. know, and a lot of rappers or such, you know, they might be scared to do that, or they may feel I'm not a rapper. I'm an artist, bro. I'm a rapper <laughs> and an artist <laughs> and an artist. <laughs> um. Speaking of man, speaking of your music, like I said, man, it's so refreshing, bro. It's so just, you know, and it's 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 no shade thrown to the city, it's no shade thrown to nobody else. But you know, we do got that certain sound, like you were saying. We do got that certain way. So when I listened to Enigma, I was like, man, this is real rap. This is good. This is great, actually. Um, actually, let's dive into Enigma, man. Why the title, man? Why why Enigma? Uh, that's a good question. I think when, you know, when I first came up with the title, I guess you know it was kind of like in the midst of different projects, and he'll mm -hmm. tell you like me when it comes to me working, I be going through like I could start a project and be like, you know, what, put it to the side. I'm gonna start a whole different project. I'm gonna come up with a different title. Like it, 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 one thing about me, like I kind I start a project stop it and then but with enigma it was kind of like it started at a point where it was like i just really wanted to show who i was and i feel like i don't know what like the word just came into my head and like i think the word enigma defines like a mysterious person and i feel like that always described me because if you ask 10 different people about me they're gonna say 10 different things like mm. some people might say i'm quiet but then it'd be other people be like man booze don't ever stop talking it might be some people that be like Oh, he really think ignorant. But if you ask another person, they might be like, I'm really intelligent. And the thing is, all them people might necessarily, they might not be wrong. They might all be right. So when I looked at a word that I felt like it best encapsulated the type of person I was, it's enigma because I'm a, I'm a person like, I'm, you can't just put me in a box. Musically, you can't put me in a box. But as a person, you can't put me in a box. Mm. Like the reason I could always go to different crowds of people, whether it be college graduates or whether it be people off the street and relate to all of them is because I'm a person that I have many different facets. Like you can't, yeah. you can't pigeonhole me into one box. So when I looked at a word that could describe me musically and as a person, it was enigma. There you go. I like that. I like it. I like it. Um, Cause usually, you know, when people come out with their first uh, project or first EP or something, it'd be self-titled or something like yeah. that. You know what I mean? So I was intrigued mm -hmm. by that. I'm like, okay, enigma. I like it. Um, So let's dig deeper into it. Three tracks, so it's technically an EP. Um, New King, uh, S O M D, which is one of my favorites, and Knowledge. Um, we gonna tap into New King first. Um, crown on my head, they say I'm the New King. Why do you feel that you are the New King? What makes you the New King? Cause I said it. <laughs> say less but no say but, less. but no uh i mean that's really it because i said it like when i said when i feel the song like i feel like i'm one of like the best in my generation there you go i mean i, I, actually, I, I'm I say just wanted camera. to know like i'm not gonna say that i just said it for the record like I just when, I say, to know. I, when i say i like feel like i was one of the best like i wasn't necessarily talking about milwaukee because i don't look at milwaukee as competition like i actually want to see everybody in milwaukee succeed so why would i look at y'all's competition the people I'm necessarily talking about is the people that already got the major deals and that's already in front of these platforms and publications. And I'm going to be honest, like some of them that be rapping that quote unquote claim they be lyricists. Like, I feel like I'm just as nice as them. Mm -hmm. What? Because they got a million dollar deal. I'm supposed to say, oh, yeah, I ain't as good as them. No, you just sitting in the league and I'm on the outside. But if you was to put us both on a track, could you stand with me? So 
when I said I was the new king, I feel like I was really the new king. I didn't. I wasn't saying that for. I needed everybody else's exactly. validation. I, I knew what I am. You're telling them. I'm telling them. There you go. The same way Wayne said he was the best rapper alive, He's or Jay you. said he was the goat. I'm telling you, I'm the new king. Say less. If you if you don't feel that way, then hey, that's you. Mm -hmm. But I know who I am. So. Great answer. Great answer. Um, it's a uh, a line on there, man. Uh, well, no, no, no. This is actually S. I believe this is S O M D. Wait, no. no. When you was like, uh, I be trying to tell the guys is more than uh, just it's more. Yeah, than yeah, money. that's SOMD. That's okay. So SOMD. Um, explain to the fans what SOMD means. Stains on my diary. Stains so that, it's on a funny my story. Okay, go ahead. That go ahead. track, and he probably would know because I sent him the track like before, like a year ago. Before okay. I, it was originally called Do Say. Wow. Like, and the reason I called it Do Say, I heard because, that bar. Yeah, I, heard <laughs> I called it Do Say because like. It the the track was kind of like a nostalgic track for me and like do say this ain't glorifying alcohol use kids drink drink responsibly <laughs> it wasn't a glorified alcohol use it was kind of like i remember like being in college drinking do say with the guys so like i would name the track do say but then when i put it to the stream platforms i was like am i really gonna make a track that's called do say like i was like let me do something more like man I don't want to say professional, but stains on my. So diary. when I was like, the hook was already called stains on my diary. So Ooh. I was like, let me just call it S O M D. The beat, everything, man. I'm talking about crazy, bro. Um, you have a you have a couple lines on there, and I'm gonna try to get a, a, to a few of them as much as I can, the best way I can. Um, because I'm not good reciting <laughs> y'all lyrics. The best way that you that y'all do it, so I can mm. sound like I'm reading <laughs> it and shit. So, but um. Brains being fried by the almighty digital. What others call reality, others call cynical. Oh, that one was simple. Like that, the uh, internet be killing y'all brains. It's, 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 I know it's simple. Y'all brains. It's simple, but they don't understand. No, nah, but they, I had they, to say it exactly. Like some people don't really realize. You sometimes you just mindless scrolling. No, nah, it kill, it nothing. be killing my brain sometimes too. Because sometimes you be like. And sometimes it don't even necessarily be you internalizing the stuff. You be turn internalizing the other people's stuff. Like exactly. I be sometimes be mad because other people be watching this, and sometimes I be like, "Bro, like I need to get off of this." If I'm being mad, like, because I'm I'm always been the type of person where it's like, if I see other people falling, it be making me mad. But then I realize, like, man, sometimes mm -hmm. you just gotta let people learn on their own. You can lead the horse to the water, but you can't make them swim. So. The internet, like, it's just simple as that. When I say brains are being fried by the almighty digital, the internet, social media, the things that's on there, it's killing folks' brains. It's rearranging mindsets. It like, is. It's, it's but, brainwashing. But it's, re, but it's reality to some folks. And, yeah, like, exactly. some people view that as reality. But exactly. when I say the cynical, that's kind of me being saying the cynical. Like, it's not necessarily reality. What are everybody portraying on there? And I even said that on New King, where it's like, y'all be capping on the grants. Oh, people yeah. People be faking. Like, oh, yeah. So, what you see on social media, all glitter ain't gold, you know, which is what some people call reality. It may not be real. Yeah, man. And then you go into, uh, you know, like I said, you was talking about, like you was tell, trying to tell your guys that it's more than mm -hmm. riches. Uh, then you said, uh, they be looking at you like, dog, you ain't trying to get it. Yeah. Like, like, <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to get it. I'm trying to get it in my see, way. Yeah. And I think that's, a, uh, once again, because with SOMD, it's like, that was a real introspective track for me. I, I kind of, and I, I kind and of I always, that that line was real um because the best way to describe that is like especially when you kind of graduate college and you know a lot of people kind of focused on their careers mm -hmm. me i'm always known as like the woke one out of everybody like the the the, the, and you the said conscious that. person and you said that and people look at me like that you and i'm that. always the type of person that be like you said oh bust and he woke yeah you said and people that. always be like i'm always the type of person like what are we gonna do for the community or how are we gonna think of the people like, bro. And, and, and a lot of my friends be like they don't really care about that. Like a lot of people just be trying to live for themselves, live individualistically, trying to get to the bag. And when I said that line, it was kind of like people be looking at me like, bro, you ain't trying to get money, like chase the bag. And it's like, but I said in the next line, I understand that mentality because it's like when you think of where we is, it's like black people, young mm -hmm. black men, and we just trying to survive in this world. I can't judge that mentality. Yeah. So that's where I was like, you, and, and I said I, I was can't even blame it. You and said, I can't blame you him. You said I can't blame it. <laughs> Because that's the way we came up. That's the way we came up. Like, we live in a capitalist society. So mm -hmm. it's like, on one hand, 
you be wanting to like dismantle it, but at the same time, you got to survive it the best way you can. And it's it like did. it's a constant contradiction. It, I mean, it, it, I'm glad you said that because you killed it at the end when you said it wasn't even at the end, but mm-hmm. when you kind of was like summing up that little um, word, uh, that paragraph, I should say, uh, I'm not sure. Um, I can't even judge it because I just spent 200 on some Georges, uh, on some J's <laughs> from an Asian <laughs> that probably made them for what, two, what'd you say, two cents? No, but it's true though, because it's like, man, bro. Nike probably, they, you know, it ain't probably, they know, all these corporations and stuff, they do be, you know, exploiting people in other countries for like, you know, migrant labor and such like that for, you know, low prices. So when man, I said that line, it's like, it was true. I had to point at myself and be like, I might criticize these people that's for a bag. Why, that's what I like. I went to Tower to buy these glasses. I ordered these Jordans off there. Like I still suffered from that same materialism. And when I add those lines in there, that's just really me to show people like I'm not it. here to preach. Like I, I suffer from the same flaws and faults that, that you do. And like it's always a constant battle on just trying to make myself a better person. Mm-hmm. So like I, when I make this music, I don't come on here and be like, I got all the answers and I'm better than you. It's like, no, I'm one of you and I'm just trying to walk the journey with you. Mm-hmm. You had another bar on there. Um, you were saying, dudes do anything for the clout. You know what I'm going to say? Yeah, but nothing for respect. And nothing for respect. Strangers treat you better than the ones you know the best. Than the <laughs> ones you know the best. Bro, that's so deep and so true. I don't think people really understand that. I don't think people really understand that you would get more support from a stranger, from a person that don't even know you, than your own family member. Have you been conflicted of that? Yeah. Like, look at, uh, I'm close with him, but I only know him for like three years. Mm. I'm closer with him than some people I done knew for, for like decades, or like mm. people I done mm. knew since mm. high school. And when I was saying like, dudes say anything for clout, for nothing, for respect, I think that's something I even knew when I was a young age. Like, people want to be the most popular person or the one that's most clout or the most that's lit, but like, the one who got the most respect, that actually got the actual morals and principles, like, let's use paid in full, for example. Good example. Look at Ace Boogie and look at Rico. Mm. Like, Rico was that dude. Like, yeah. he had all the girls. Like, he had all the clout. He had all the, the, you know, the love in the club. But Ace Boogie wasn't like that. Ace nope. Boogie was chill. Chill. He got his money. Mm-hmm. But... He had his respect. Everybody knew, okay, that's Ace Boogie. Ace Boogie stand on business. He making sure everybody eat. Rico, on the other hand, had all the love, but then didn't nobody really respect him. You could probably a lot of people didn't even like him. They was a fear of him. Hmm. But now, don't get me wrong. I know Alpo and all of them, they still around. So this ain't no right, <laughs> disrespect right, to right, nobody. Right, I'm just true. basing it off the movie. No, 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 but shit. basically it's like that. It's like some people say things for clout. Some people say things for respect. And, you know, I ain't never somebody who's just going to go off of what the masses want or doing stuff for popularity. You know, I stand on morals and principles, what's going to give me respect. And I think that's something I always carry with me throughout my entire life. People, I ain't never, in high school, I was never the most popular person, but it wasn't no flaw in my name. They can't mm. say Booze did this or Booze was shiesty, mm. Booze backdoor this person, Booze was a liar this. Like, mm. Ask most people about me, they're gonna say booze stand up, booze ain't never did nothing. I that's the type of person I carry myself. So, but everybody, some people don't care about respect, they want the clout. Mm, so, mm, mm. um, the track knowledge, man, you hit me with one, um, uh, because it is, it, it sounded so, so crazy. It, not in like, not in the bad way, but it was just like, man, he telling the truth, man. Uh, you said. Days we were kids, it was less sleazy. Now these girls talking cash app just to me. <laughs> oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my. Man, man, what what, what happened to the world? Oh, cash me no. or pass me. And I don't and understand. Even, it. And all you want is a conversation. A conversation. I offer you on a date, and you still asking me to cash app you. Well, that don't even make no sense. I'm gonna offer you, take you out on a date that I'm already gonna pay for. And you still asking me for money. And hmm. my thing is with that is just like, I'm not necessarily mad that women want to do it to provide for them, but it's just kind of like, y'all, one, y'all expecting it from strangers. Like, y'all don't even know this dude. You're not, not nobody, you ain't even seen this dude in person. You're already expecting it. Hmm. And then two, it's just kind of like, I don't, I don't understand it. I just feel like, you know, it's a lot of, young boss women out here that's really getting into it and i'm gonna highlight y'all because y'all really doing y'all thing there you go 
they yeah. really get into it and for them to even just ask a dude for money like that they look at it as an insult to themselves so when i'll be seeing some women out here be doing that it just be like why? why like why are you doing that if i would I as a as a dude i would feel embarrassed if, imagine me saying that cash at me to go pay for my haircut this weekend mm -hmm. you would look at me like i'm a like a fool exactly so I, the... I, I don't understand it like but hey i can't knock the hustle though because it's probably a lot of dudes that's going to actually you know pay that cash at for the conversation mm. that just won't be me now i'll take you out to eat but cash after you for a conversation yeah that's i don't think my mother would be proud of that so. <laughs> <laughs> you snap man um so i came across a video like i said man um you don't really got no visuals like that and it's you know i was sad man i was a little sad man but i did come across a few stuff that you do have out there so i am i am anticipating i'm excited to see what's coming next anyway so but I did come across uh, Cold Summer featuring mm -hmm. you and uh, yeah, Loon right I was here. featured on that one here. Yeah. yeah. I mean, well, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you were the feature, actually. Um, so uh, so it's your track, Loon right? So <laughs> Cold Summer. Uh, summer Cold. <laughs> summer Cold? Yeah. Summer oh, cold. okay. I'm sorry. Summer Cold. Fire. The beat. It's something totally different. I wasn't expecting somebody like Booze to be on like that. That's you know what a lot mean? of people said. It, but it's fire, bro. <laughs> Both of y'all, the way y'all wrote that. Um, Summer Code. What's the what's the inspiration behind that, man? Why that track? Uh, real. It's just highlighting like the reality of what's going on in the city. Um, Cause I see y'all did the little skit in the beginning. Yeah, yeah, that was um inspired one hundred percent by uh, Memphis. Mm -hmm. um yeah just like how like what's going on in the city i know we uh made a reference to um they pulling ricky's now yeah yeah nah, yeah yeah so it was a lot of like references to like old school like what was going on back then like it's still going on and just letting people know like Milwaukee is not sweet like it's still yeah. it still go down here i'm mm. pretty sure they know that but yeah it's yeah. a nice track man so so y'all got two videos together or is it just? I see. Yeah, we do. Yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. I got two videos together. Survival man. code. Survival code. I don't think I got a chance to see that one, but I will check it out. And you know, I can't wait to have you up here one day as well, so we can talk deeper about it. But I was glad you brought them because, like I said, you was in my notes. So you know, it all worked out at the end. Um, booze. Uh, who would you like to work with in the city? Because. Uh, you only got a, uh, well, the feature I seen was with Elliot. Mm -hmm. And uh, you don't have a lot of features with a lot of people besides. Uh, See, this is a thing with me. Like, people be like, like, obviously, like people I do music with, everybody be saying, like, we should do a song, but then nobody ever actually, like, get been, to I, it. I've been, so, like, I been there. It'd be, in a lot of tracks, even that I do got with people, don't nobody ever release it. Like, I got other tracks with him, like, you know, Ty Motives, um, that like we just ain't been released. But when it comes to like who I would want to collab with, I'm open to collab with anybody. There you like go. like I said, I'm a fan of a lot of different artists in the city and I wanna see everybody in the city win. So anybody that you know, as long as I like your music and I like your character, like I'm open to working with anybody. That's so. what's up, man. That's what's up. So uh I wanna ask you this. What do you want the fans and the people to get out of your music? What do you want them to get from booze? I think when they hear booze, you know, they see a young man who's still navigating the world, but they, they see a young man who really has a unique perspective that he wants to bring in it and that, you know, he's doing his best to really make music to really kind of shift the hearts and the minds of like the world around him. But, you know, I always say my music is deeper than just me as an individual. Like I'm not going on the rap to just, oh, I got to get a deal and, and get rich and then leave Milwaukee. Like, mm. no, nah, like, you know, one of the people, you know, me and him that we both hold in high regard is Nipsey Hussle. So when I hold Nipsey Hussle in high regard, there you go. look what he did for his community. Like, all these rappers here who got millions of dollars, y'all got all these, you know, opportunities. Y'all not sharing it with the same people that formed the subject matter for your rhymes. Like, mm. Nipsey wasn't just South Central in his music. He was South Central in what the proceeds he was getting from his music. He, mm -hmm. he took what he was making off of rap in his own individual hustle mm. and he put it right back into his community you know peace treaties with the gangs stem stem programs for you know the youth of south central 
Like, that's monumental right there. So when I make my music, you know, I don't intend to just, oh, I'm going to be the rapper to make it on Milwaukee. And, and, nah, what you finna do for the for your roots? You know, that's the principles and stuff that I got ingrained in me as a child. You know, what is your service you can do as an artist? You know, because at the end of the day, it's hip hop. It's, it's more than just us rapping on the mic. It's more than just us putting words on beats. You know, this is really from our tradition of, mm. of, of oppression in, in our history. So it's like, as an artist, I got a, a duty that's more than just putting out great music. Now, don't get me wrong. You're going to get great music from me, and I intend to to put myself in the pantheon of greats, but there you go. it's deeper than just rap. We're going to really shift shift a lot of things. It's coming. <laughs> the eyes is on us now. The eyes are on us, man. The eyes are on us. We getting there, man. Um, Before we get out of here, booze, I want to know do you feel that Milwaukee is looked down upon? And if so, why? It's definitely looked down upon. Mm. And I'll say it definitely is. Uh, I'm going to be honest. I got friends from other cities. And this is going to be a loaded answer. But I think Milwaukee is looked down upon for two reasons. I think, one, they don't understand us. Like, they don't understand our culture. They don't understand our slang. They don't understand our lingo. So it's like, for what we might appreciate, the world might not understand it. But then at the same time, too, I feel like they don't really kind of see the full array of artists that we have. Like, we got the TikTok sound. Mm. We got the, the low-end sound. We mm. got the slap sound. Mm. We got alternatives. We got lyricists. We got backpackers. And my thing is, is like, you can't put Milwaukee rap. When you got rappers like me, rappers like him, I can name rappers like Jalen G, Elliot, Ty Motors, mm. uh, Yoda, Genesis, Renji. There's a whole lot of rappers I could list out here. You can't say Milwaukee don't got talent. Now, Milwaukee got lyricists. We got every type of rap you need. We got real street rappers. We got real backpackers, alternative, R&B singers. We got every single type of talent in the world. But at the same time, it's like maybe when they just see only one sound, that might turn people off. But mm. I think... It's not even just with music. I think everybody just always want to sleep on Milwaukee because this ain't like a major city. You know, Milwaukee is like a, a Midwestern Rust Belt city where it's struggle. They don't even know it's black people here. So they always going to just put us just to the side. But it's going to come, though. And we slowly finna have a breakthrough. Yes, sir. You know, yes, sir. It, it might just take one industry rapper to just hop on the bandwagon of somebody. But we slowly going to make a breakthrough. It's getting there. Like and I when said. it breakthrough, it's going to be. Every every sound, every way, we just want to take like over you just said. Industry. We got almost every like you said. We got every sound. We got what they need. Yeah, we just need to expose. It ain't no shortage of talent here. Mm -hmm. I done been to so many showcases, done to watch too many videos. To see. Milwaukee don't got talent. No, Milwaukee got everything. everything. Great answer, man. Great answer. Um, so what can we expect next from Richie Booms, man? See, we got. It's two projects coming up next. Okay. They're going to be exclusively produced by TJB. Now, TJB is, uh, he's a young uh, producer okay. from Milwaukee. Uh, he actually white. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to just say that. He actually white. But he like one of them white producers. Like, I always, I call him Baby Alchemist. I ain't never told him this because I ain't want to make it seem like I'm just saying it because he white. But, like, he one of them, like, white sample-based producers. I was right. like, that's little Baby Alchemist. But... Not to put it, but besides his race, you know, he's very talented. He ain't no culture vulture. If I was, I wouldn't be working with no person that I felt that wasn't exploiting the culture. But basically, he's going to be producing these next two projects. And it's going to be an EP, and then it's going to lead into an album. But they both concept. Now, as a lyricist, people always expect us to make, like, conceptual bodies of work. I know Kendrick always made a, a name, say, for doing such a thing. So it's going to be the next EP is going to be called IGWT. I can't say the name because if I s explain what it is, somebody going to run off with this idea there you and they're going to steal it. There you go. But the thing I can say about this next EP and this next album is they both based off of Power. Hmm. Now, Power, one of my favorite TV shows. Everybody who know me know I be talking about Power all the time, bro. I watch it every week faithfully. <laughs> <laughs> Power, one of my favorite shows. So I was like, I already done love this show so much. So I was like, I'm going to make a project. That's based off of power. That's all I can give it. So the next EP is going to be, is the abbreviation is IGWT. Okay. It's going to be based off of power. 
and then it's going to flow into another album that's based off of power but that's the only information i can give about it my next project igwt is going to be an ep based off of power the tv show yeah i'll be looking out for that man <laughs> sound like it's gonna be great man um man like i said man great lovely humble talented artists both of you guys man so refreshing so man like i said classic already i'm still putting my i'm, I'm stamping it. juice talks that juice talk approved <laughs> god damn it 100 juiced up um glad to have y'all here man like i said man i appreciate it hopefully had to have y'all back because it's, it's no it's more to come obviously yeah it's, it's know, a lot to come. To come we just um, getting started let the people know where they can find richie booze man. yeah instagram richie booze that's Richie Booz, R I C H I E B U Z. Not Buzz, yeah. Not Buzz. It's Richie Booz. <laughs> it's, it's not Buzz Lightyear. It's Richie Booz. <laughs> pronounced like alcohol beer. It's Richie Booz, R I C H I E B U Z. Instagram really kind of what I be using the most. Mm -hmm. I ain't finna tell my Facebook. Everybody there who needs to know me, they can find me. Yeah. It is. And then Snapchat, it's the same thing, but okay. I don't even really use that much. It's really, I really and, only mostly use Apple Instagram. Music and, and, and everything. And, and everything yeah, goes yeah. all the streaming platforms. All streaming yeah. platforms. Yeah. Yeah. I ain't got no Twitter because they permanently suspended me off of that. For real? Yeah. You wanna, you wanna tell us why? Yeah, so uh, I think I called somebody a. Uh, uh, a coon, C O O N. Oh, so I think bro ended up reporting me, and then I was just like, and then I think they said like the language was off. I probably might use it a few times, and then eventually they permanently suspended me. I tried to make some other accounts, and then they still it was off you. this, still off this. So Twitter, you ain't gonna find me on there no more. But Instagram, all streaming platforms is Richie okay. Booze. So, but say less, say yeah. less, man. There you have it, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Richie Booze. Enigma is out right now, man. All streaming platforms, man. Great, lovely EP, man. One to three. On, re on repeat. No skips, man. Tap in, man. Much love and respect, man. Juice Talk TV. It's your main man, Cool Tay. We out.